So I want to talk about, uh, in rational functions, ways of telling if it has a whole or a slant asymptote. And both of these, um, both of these come out of that same thinking that we sort of do with, uh, with horizontal asymptotes. And this is about extreme behavior. So we're talking about as x gets really big, as x approaches infinity, uh, what happens? So that's a, that's a question that we can, that we can ask. Um, and that's really going to apply to slant. And we might as well throw holes in that same category because we kind of do the same sort of analysis to discover holes. Um, so I'm going to sketch a graph of each of these. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I have any, any holes. Like I notice as x gets really big, uh, for example, on this one, I have x squared over x. Like those are the terms that dominate. x squared dominates the, uh, the numerator. x dominates the denominator because they're going to be the biggest terms. They're going to get so big they dwarf the other terms. So essentially as x gets really big, it looks like this tends towards x. This, this tends towards infinity grows without bound. And so does this one, x squared over x. So uh, I don't have a horizontal asymptote is what that tells me. Um, so let me dig in a little bit more. I'm going to I'm gonna see what I can do here. I'm going to factor this, this numerator. So things that multiply to 21 add to 10, uh, 7 and 3. So x plus 7 times x plus 3. And I notice that's over x plus 7. So here, this divides out. x plus 7 divided by itself is 1. So I could say that this function, this f of x, is equal to x plus 3, except I lost some information. Um, I'm dividing by x plus 7, which means I have some limitations on what I can plug into here because I don't want to divide by 0 because I can't. So uh, that means that x cannot be negative 7. When, when I have something that divides out, I lose some information, that becomes a hole on my function. So essentially, this function uh, that's right here uh, is the same as the line x plus 3, except x cannot be negative 7. So here's negative 7. Uh, x plus 3, that line looks like this. You know, it has it because it's slope intercept form. So slope of 1 intercept of 3. So it goes through 0, 3, goes through negative 3, 0, and it's just this line. But what happens is when x is negative 7, right here, there's a hole. And it happens because, again, I divide out that x plus 7, I can't divide by 0. So the way I can find where that hole is at is I know the x value is negative 7. So when x is negative 7, what is this? Uh, y equals negative 7 plus 3, negative 4. So a hole happens at the point negative 7, negative 4. So graphing this is the same as graphing that with a hole at negative 7. Again, holes happen when something cancels out from the division. All right, let's take a look at this one. Uh, same sort of thinking. I'll try and factor this thing. Multiply to 8, add to 6, 4 and 2. So x plus 4, x plus 2, and notice that's over x minus 2. So nothing here cancels. But I do know this thing grows without bound, and these are only one apart. This is going to be a slant asymptote. This is going to settle down to a straight line. If you think about as, as x gets really big, x squared over x, uh, this settles down to, to, to x is what that's telling me, but I want to know exactly what it settles down to. So to find my slant asymptote, I'm actually going to do the division. So I'm going to take this x squared plus 6x plus 8 and divide by x minus 2. So I'll use synthetic division. So I use the 0, 2, and then I'll pull out those coefficients, 1, 6, and 8, and do the synthetic division. Bring down the 1, multiply by 2, add, multiply, add, so when I, when I do this division, what I get is, this was an x squared. I divided it, so it goes kind of down a level. So this would be x plus 8. I'll write it over here, x plus 8. And then I had a remainder of 24. So that would be plus 24 over x minus 2. Now this is equivalent to that. Those are exactly the same as each other. 
And what I want to point out is, as x gets really big, like this grows to whatever x plus 8 is, but this part right here, this, this uh, remainder, that goes to 0. So essentially, as x gets really big, this thing starts to settle down to this line, y equals x plus 8. It, it doesn't equal it. It's an asymptote. It's what it gets closer and closer to, extreme behavior. So if I go to graph this one then, I know I have a slant asymptote at this line, y equals x plus 8. So here's the point 0, 8, uh, 0, negative 8. And again, the function doesn't go through those. I just know that I have a slant asymptote there. And let me label it. I also know if I go to do the rest of the division. So that's how you find the slant asymptote. So if I do the rest of the graphing here, x can't be 2. So I'll have an asymptote here at x equals 2. Uh, I know some things about this thing. I know that um, y equals 0. So my x-intercepts would be at negative 4 and negative 2. So it's going to be somewhere in here. I know my y-intercept when x equals 0 is 4, uh, negative 4, 8 divided by negative 2. So that's here. So actually, even just by graphing those, I know that this is going to be like this, and I'll probably have something up here too. I can always check that on Desmos. All right, so that's holes, slant asymptotes. They both come from the same initial process. Factor that denominator, see what cancels. If something cancels, you have a hole. If something doesn't cancel, you do have a slant asymptote in the x squared over x uh, situations.